have the greatest experience here in the earth. For many people say that, you know, they're living for the Lord. Uh, well, really, you should be allowing the Lord God to live through you so that you're not seen, but Jesus is. And in this particular time, and you guys are on our live stream this morning, we want to get into uh, this wonderful time. I mean, it's a, it's a dynamic time for, you know, everybody's talking about Jesus. But it's also a time for us to actually have uh, an ear to hear what the voice of Christmas is really all about, okay? And so this morning, we're going to use two sets of scriptures uh, that deal with Christmas. And again, those of you that are coming on a little late, welcome to the live stream. God bless you guys. Thank you for being here. We understand you all all, all over the world. You're globally and, uh, and we believe that you're multiplying and increasing as the Holy Spirit is invited into your life every day. Now, as I was saying, we're going to use two uh, particular sets of scriptures today, uh, one in Matthew and one in Luke, that deals with a part of the, what we call the Christmas story. But within that Christmas story, I really want you to hear the voice of Christmas, all right? what the voice of Christmas is all about. Because many people are singing songs uh, and there are people that are giving particular messages all over the world about this particular time when Jesus was born and how the angels came and the shepherds went and the wise men searched out and whatever. And all these things are good things. They're, they're laid out in the scripture. But it's the, it's the ability to hear what's being said to us that makes all the difference in the world. The ability. And so this day, uh, and I take it upon, you know, all of us, part of Faith Christian Center World Outreach, and you guys that are uh, online members, and you guys that are uh, just visiting, just listening, uh, tuning in, uh, you know, you, everybody loves to hear something about Jesus all the time, if you're a believer. And so we take this day, and this is a very special time, tomorrow is Christmas Day, and we take this very special time today to prepare ourselves for the adventures in the Holy Spirit that's coming our way, uh, even as this day continues and even as tomorrow approaches and we enter into that day, or we meet our family members, friends, and, you know, acquaintances, even people that we've not known before. We need to know what is God saying in this wonderful time that we celebrate uh, because celebration is always about some dynamic pers person and some dynamic event that has taken place. So join me today as we uh, go through these and as we invite the Holy Spirit always to be a part of our messages that come to you, uh, the word should never be just presented to you just as a word. It should be presented to you also with an encounter uh, with the Holy Spirit who's here, who develops, who creates an atmosphere for us to, to be able to receive the things of God's will here on the earth. Amen. So God bless you. Would you please go with me this morning uh, to the book of Luke chapter 2. Uh, this is one set of scriptures that we're going to use this morning uh, in talking about the voice of Christmas. And then we're going to go over to Matthew, uh, all right, chapter 2. And we're going to also go over there, and we're going to look at some of the scriptures there. And we're going to put these particular things together and to bring them to a place of height where we can understand what the voice of Christmas is all about, okay? And Luke chapter 2, all right, we pick this up in uh, verse... Uh, Oh, verse 3, and it says, And all went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth to Ju into Judea uh, unto the city of David, which was called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, uh, to be taxed with Mary, his sin spouse wife, being great with child. All right? And then it says this, And so it was that while they were there and the days were accomplished, uh, that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, uh, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same uh, country shepherds. Now you need to underline this because this is very important in understanding uh, the topic or the subject of what we're talking today about the voice of Christmas. It says, there were shepherds there abiding in the field, uh, keeping watch over their flock by night, and it says, Lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Okay, fear not, all right? For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. That's all people, okay? This is a message from heaven to all people, okay? For unto you 
is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this, this should be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the, with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, now please get this, all right? Please get this. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So the message of heaven came through voices, all right? Through the angel first, the angel of the Lord, and then through these particular angels who joined there, who sang, okay? And the, the shepherds were the ones that were listening, okay? They were the ones who heard this. And so uh, when we see uh, the pictures of the shepherds there in the stable with Mary and whatever, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, truth to that, okay? And when we see the shepherds and the wise men and all of them gathered together in the stable, uh, that is really not the truth of everything, okay? Uh, you have to understand the dynamics of time that's taking place here because this was the same night. A little later on when we read the scriptures, you're going to see that it was a, a, a great while when, before the wise men showed up there, Jesus had actually become a young child. All right, And it says that it came to pass when the angels were gone uh, from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come, come to pass, which the Lord have made known unto us. And they came with haste. They found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard uh, it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. All right. And it says, Mary kept these things in her heart, pondered these things in her heart. Now we see this is one picture of, of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ that we celebrate. And, uh, you know, and it wasn't, there wasn't snow on the ground, okay? <laughs> All right, everybody's talking about white Christmas. There wasn't snow on the ground. We go to Matthew chapter 2. All right? Now here's another account, okay? And it says this, And Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea on the day of Herod the king. And behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Wow. You're asking the king. Where is the, where is the king? Where is the real king? And it says, uh, For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Now, naturally, they came to the city of the king because Jerusalem is the city of the great king. So they came to the city of the great king looking for the king who was born king of the Jews. And when heard the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And uh, so when he gathered all the priests and the scribes and the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they told him, Beth, Bethlehem, Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And so we go down to verse 7. Then Herod said unto them, privately called the wise men, and incurred, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. So he's wanting to know, okay, because he has, he has other motives. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, search diligently for the young child. When you have found him, bring him to me. Bring a word again to me, that I may come and worship him also. And when they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over the, where the young child was. Now you notice now that Jesus is a young child. A lot of time has passed between the birth in the stall and now being in a house. Okay? And it says this, And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding uh, great joy. And when they were coming to the house, not the stable, all right, not the barn, all right, not the stall. It says, when they came into the house, they saw the young child with Mary and his mother, and they fell down and they worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, all right, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And then being warned in a dream that by, of God, being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to her, they departed into their own country, all right? And when they departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt, and be thou until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Now, when we talk about the message, the voice of Christmas, what is, well, what is God saying to us? Well, first of all, every voice, all right, contains within itself the ability to shape an image in a person, every voice, okay? And we're talking about the voice of Christmas. Every voice has the opportunity to shape its listeners, okay, into a certain image of whatever that voice is. 
If you remember Goliath, he stood out and he shouted to the armies of Israel all those days. And every day that he shouted out, his voice shouted out to those men, they became an image of fear. He spoke fear, they became fearful. He spoke fear, they became an image of, of fearfulness to the point that when David showed up and David said, you know, asked about Goliath, they said, have you seen this man? You know, have you seen this man? They were so full of fear because of the voice that had spoken to them that now they had given up all their rights to reign and rule and to walk in authority with the Lord God. They gave up that because, again, that voice came and it caused them to be shaped. Well, when you see the voice of God speaking to the wise men, all right, the voice of God shaped them into new direction, okay? When he told them to go another way, he chose them to come there to bring uh, what was spoken to, and I believe this by Daniel teaching them uh, through those years in Persia, and they come, they've sought him out, but they, they have the ability to hear. See, they didn't, they didn't turn the voice of God away. Now, one of the things that a hearing ear has the ability to do is to submit itself, all right, so that it might gain the reproduction of that voice, all right? When we go to, and you can read these particular scriptures for yourself, when we go to the book of 1 Samuel, and when the Lord was speaking and calling Samuel at night, all right, Samuel did not understand what was going on until Eli told him to go and to listen and then say, Lord, speak, your servant is waiting. So when God showed up and stood by Samuel and called him again, Samuel responded now. His ear was able to understand the voice that was speaking to him. It welcomed the voice that was speaking to him, all right? It received the things from the voice that was speaking to him because he submitted himself to the voice that was speaking to him. He says, here I am, your servant. Speak unto me. Tell me what you want, all right? So we see from these particular uh, scriptures and many, many more that a voice has the opportunity to, to bring an image to reshape your life, your destiny, your, your ability to do things, okay? And so when the voice showed up to Joseph in a dream, what did Joseph do? Because Joseph had heard before. Joseph, he submitted himself, his ear, to the voice of the angel or the dream that showed up that, that God spoke to him in a dream. He submitted himself to that, and he gained an image of, of moving on all right, rather than staying there and saying, well, you know something, well, we've been here for a while and this house seems pretty good. I got a good job here working, you know. No, 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 no. He submitted himself to the voice that spoke to him because he understood the ability of having an ear to hear, an ear that has the receiving power, okay, as Jesus always said during his messages, he didn't have an ear to hear, let him hear. Remember those things? So this voice that spoke to him, wasn't as loud as the voice of comfort that he had in the house. The voice that spoke to the wise men, it wasn't as loud as that which Herod had spoke to them, okay? Uh, the voice was louder because they followed the instructions, all right? See, one of the great things about, about listening to people is that we can choose by the ability of the ear. We can choose to to follow, we can choose to not follow. When those wise men heard Herod say, go, come back, when God spoke, those wise men heard God's voice louder than they heard Herod's voice, okay? Which shows you and I, even Joseph, it was louder than his comfort. Uh, even, even Jesus, when he spoke to many of, the, many of the people in his messages, in his ministry talk, what he said to them became louder than their sickness and disease. When he spoke to the leper and he says, and he touched him and he says, I will be thou clean. The voice of Jesus became louder to the leper than the sickness was, okay? And this is the, this is the factor of Christmas that when we, we understand the voice of Christmas, we'll understand that this is the voice that should speak louder to us than any other voices in the world. We're gonna to get to that in a moment because I know you're thinking, what's the voice of Christmas? Well, we, we're still talking right now. I, I need you to understand the power that's within the ear. Because when you see people that say that they love the Lord or they care about the Lord or they love people or whatever, 
but they're doing other things, their actions are doing other things, it means that there is a voice in our life that's louder than that emotion that they really have for you. Yes, they do have a, an emotion for you, but there's a voice in our life that's directing them uh, louder than that voice of their emotion and their care for you. you. You with me? Because you've had people to tell you they love you, but then they treat you this way, or they talk about you. You've had people. So there's another voice that's in their life. Many years ago, I learned this stuff many years ago, and I used to share with people, I said, too many voices, too many choices. Because the loudest voice in your life is the one that you're going to listen to, okay? The loudest voice. Uh, you guys have been shopping. You guys have been shopping for Christmas and buying gifts and whatever. You walk into a store, and especially you guys that may be um, from my generation or the generation behind me, all right, and you walk into the store, and all of a sudden, there's this music that's playing that, that, that you used to listen to in your generation, all right? And it's not playing so loud in the store that it's overshadowing everybody's conversation, but it is playing, and guess what? You hear it, and before you know it, what are you doing? You, you're moving or thinking or got some moving or action toward that music that's louder in your life or, or speaking louder right now than even the, the, the desire to pick out a gift for somebody. You're listening to that the whole time that you're shopping. You're listening to that because it's a very loud voice in your life. It used to be a very loud voice in your life. And until, again, you renew your mind, those kind of voices don't go away, okay? But that's an example that you guys have experienced here lately, just going out Christmas shopping. They're playing certain music, they're playing certain songs that you guys knew and grew up with, and whatever, and you hear those things. Well, it is no different in the whole world that you and I live in. Voices are most important to us, okay? And the voices that you have in your life, they are more, they're more important to you than you really think, okay? The power of words, that are spoken to us are so dynamic and people yet, we have such a, a low ear uh, of, of reception that we don't understand what's being done to us. You go back to Genesis chapter one and you'll see that four words created the universe. Light, it, it says God said, and God said, and God said. Light be, or this or whatever. Four words began everything, the process of everything showing you the power of a voice. And God spoke his voice to nothing, and everything became. So when, when a voice, when we listen to voices, we have to understand that there are certain things that a voice is wanting to reproduce, okay? And so the football coach, when he's speaking to his players, his voice is wanting a reproduction of what he's saying, okay? It's, it's wanting to shape that player into an image of what his voice is saying, okay? Well, when it comes down to you and I hearing certain things about Christmas, when people are speaking and saying certain things about Christmas or speaking, singing certain songs about Christmas or everyday speaking, okay? And we're talking about the voice of Christmas right now. When we hear certain things, we have to automatically understand that if we trust those voices that are speaking to us, those voices are going to shape us into something that that voice is, okay? Maybe not what you want to be, but it's going to shape you into something that that voice requires or that voice wants you to become, okay? And so when we look at how the Lord spoke to the wise men or how the angels came and spoke on behalf of God to the shepherds, okay, they immediately received and they took in an image that there was a savior or they took in the image that there was a king or well, they took in an image that their safety in Egypt instead of staying here where I am in Bethlehem. That voice brings and creates and shapes you to become something, okay? And this is what the voice of Christmas does for us. It comes to shape us. When we're singing songs about Jesus, it shapes the joy of God in us. When we're singing songs and when we're preaching about the Lord Jesus Christ coming, it, it shapes a hope in us that God didn't leave us alone. That's what the voice of Christmas does. The greatest voice of Christmas is in John 3.16. Please come go with me to John 3.16. See, because God's above, he's, not, he's never pushed up. So we have to understand that he's everywhere. He's always doing something. He's, he's beneath, but he's not pressed down. See, God's everywhere. 
And we need to recognize that. And he's everywhere speaking to everyone. In John 3, 16, this is Nicodemus coming, okay? Nicodemus. Now remember, a voice can't produce what it says, all right? If the ear is unwilling, unable, or not ready to hear, the voice can't do it. Football players, uh, basketball players, uh, anybody under any kind of coaching, uh, when that voice is spoken and that ear refused to hear, then that voice that's spoken cannot pr reproduce anything in that, in that particular person or that, or, or that area. So the voice being spoken about this time of the year uh, around us, all right, you have to understand that there's a reproduction that that voice is trying to reproduce in people. When you, when you hear songs that, you know, about uh, he, him, and whatever, but it never mentions Jesus, that song is not trying to, to reproduce Jesus in you. It's trying to reproduce some humanistic personal form in you, okay? And so we follow and suit on making sure that I know that my ear is able and, and, and able, not just able, but willing to receive what is truth. Now, I don't know all truth, okay? And you don't know all truth, but the truth with, that we do know, we are growing in it because God is all truth and God is always revealing to us. So as I listen to the things of the Holy Spirit, I follow the word of God, I listen to the word of God. The word of God is speaking to me to reproduce in me an image, to shape in me an image that guess what? That's going to allow me to grow in my destiny. It's gonna allow me to grow in success and in authority because Every voice that speaks to you is after two things in your life. Your authority, okay? That's right, your authority and your destiny. It's after those things, okay? And if it's coming negatively, all right, not to build up your authority and your success, but if it's coming negatively to, to press you down, to keep you pressed down or whatever, it's coming to steal the authority that you have to use and it's coming to steal your destiny, all right? We look at Jesus here speaking to Nicodemus, all right? And Nicodemus was a very wise man, and he had some truth, but again, you have to understand that the Lord is all truth, okay? And this is what we seek constantly. You and I, we don't know all truth, but we know the truth that we know, and we gain more because, again, we listen to the voice of truth that constantly builds more truth in us, all right? It says this, all right? Uh, and this is Nicodemus' uh, conversation and Jesus' conversation. We, we pick this up in verse 9. Well, verse 5, this is Jesus. He answered. Well, verse 4, we can't leave this stuff out because it's all about voice and whatever. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born again when he's old? All right, this is in verse 4, chapter 3. Can he enter into a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered and said, truly, truly, I say unto you, uh, I say unto thee, except a man is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Okay, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Okay, Jesus is laying it out on him. Again, Nicodemus knew some truth, but guess what? God knows all truth. And he's saying this to him. He says, marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. In other words, he knows that Nicodemus' ear is not able to handle everything he's saying. See, like some people's ears on. Remember those who Jesus spoke a word to about the blood covenant that he was bringing, you know, eat my flesh and, and, my, and drink my blood? And guess what? It says many of his disciples, they went away. Why? Because they did not have an ear to understand. They didn't understand. So guess what? Because they didn't have an ear to understand and they didn't have a willing ear to receive truth, more truth than what they had, guess what? They walked away. Jesus says, marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and, and, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst tell whence it cometh and, and where it goes. And so it is that everyone that is born of the Spirit. All right? And Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? All right? Again, we come back to the ability of the ear. The ear has to be willing to hear, it has to be able to receive, and it has to want or desire to, to reproduce what that voice is saying. This is why some players succeed in professional sports where some others don't and, and both had the same coach. It's because of one being able to 
to and desiring to understand and to know what that voice is speaking and saying and giving them, whereas the other one still relies on their own talents or gifts and things and say, well, my talent and gift is better than the voice that's speaking to me. What I can do is better than the voice that's speaking to me. And many people fail right there in life. They fall away because, again, they, you know, they, they don't want to submit, as Samuel did, to what God is saying, the voice of God. And so they miss out on the things of God. And we don't want to miss out on the things of God. We already missed out on enough. Jesus said to Nicodemus, now listen, voice to voice is speaking here. Ear to ear is hearing. Jesus answered and said unto them, Are not art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Say, say what? Are you, aren't you very knowledgeable and you don't know these, these things about my word? He says, Truly, truly, I say unto you, we speak that which we know and testify that which we have seen, and you receive not our witness. In other words, what, I, what, what has been said, God has said, is what you already have. What God has already said it's what you and I already see. Are you, are you guys with me today? See, everything that we see is something that God has already said, okay? And so Jesus is trying to explain to Nicodemus the power of what God has really willed for man to be. And Nicodemus has a problem hearing it because of the loudest voice that's speaking in his life right now. And that is the natural man. It's the, thing, the first thing he asked Jesus, how can these things be? How can a man enter into his mother's womb again? He's thinking naturally. The natural man is shouting at him louder than the spiritual man is, see? And this is where we come down to, again, the voice of Christmas. Please listen to me, because the voice of Christmas is not carnality, all right? It's God Almighty speaking to us. He says this, Truly I say unto you, we speak that we know and testify that we have seen. You receive not our witness. If I've told you earthly things and you believe not, <laughs> he says, listen, if, if your ear is unable to understand earthly things, how are you then, how can I tell you heavenly things? See, because again, it's the ability of the ear. See, the ability of the ear to hear. No man have ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, here's the voice of Christmas. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That's the voice of Christmas. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. See, can the ear receive that? See, this is the whole question to the whole world. All right, the voice of Christmas. We celebrate Jesus' birth. We call it Christmas Day. We celebrate it. And, and there's nothing wrong with celebrating Jesus' birthday in any day that you want to. But the question is that there was a voice in Jesus' birth speaking to the world. All right? For God, hmm, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the voice of Christmas. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's the voice of Christmas. He that believeth on him and is not condemned, he that believeth on him is not condemned, he that believeth on him is not condemned, that's the voice of Christmas. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds might be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. In other words, I listen to the Lord, I listen to God's voice, and in listening to God's voice, I submitted myself. See, listening is simply an act of submission. That's all it is. I submit myself to the voice that's speaking to me. Many people have, uh, would never admit that they have sold out to 
Satan, that they've sold their life out to Satan, but yet there are many that have sold out their life to culture. They will listen to culture. Culture has a louder voice than the voice of truth. Culture has a louder voice than, than the word of God. I'm a black man, I'm this man, I'm that man, I want this, I want that. Culture, I'm a yellow man, I'm the green man, I'm the mixed up man, I'm this. And that speaks louder to people than the truth of God's word. And yet, in the voice of Christmas, the voice of Christmas is saying, whosoever will. This is God's voice. If you'll submit, whosoever will. If you come and believe on my son, whosoever will, guess what? This is the, this is the way, the truth, and the life. Whosoever will. And so we take this time, and it's not a long time, but we take this time to make sure that whatever voices are in your life, understand that they're shaping you for something. All right? They want to reproduce what's being said. When God said, let there be light, guess what? His voice reproduced what he said. Nothing became light. Everything around us is something that God has said. Everything, okay? Something that has already been said. You and I have the privilege now to look at the word of God and to take the invitation that God gave through his son, the voice of Christmas, and say, Lord, this is me. I submit to your word. I have an ear to hear. I open up myself. In fact, Jesus said it this way in Revelation chapter, chapter 3, verse 20. He said, I stand at the door and knock. All right? If any man open, he says, I'll come in. The handle to the door is inside the door, not on the outside. The handle is your will. Will I submit to Jesus knocking, desiring to come in to sup with me and me with him? See, the voice is on the outside, but again, the answer is on the inside, the will of a listening ear. Will I allow, will I submit, will I say, Lord, you know something? I really need you right now. Come in and reproduce what you want to reproduce in my life. I'm listening to you. And this is the stature of growth, that we grow from being babes in Christ to maturing in Christ. The willing to have an ear, again, that's willing to hear, that's able to hear, and it's ready to receive what truth says. No one can miss out on this because God has placed us in a world where voices are around us constantly. In the book of Genesis, when they were building the table, the Tower of Babel, and it says that God came down and confound our voices, the languages, our voices, because that one voice could accomplish anything. Well, this is the one voice of truth, Jesus Christ. And that one voice of truth in our life causes us to be healed, to be forgiven. It causes us to be raised up. It causes our life to be life above the ordinary. That one voice, the voice of truth, as Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. That one voice that we listen to. Sometimes we read the Word of God and we go through the Word of God and we, and we, we think we're hearing four or five different voices, but we're only really hearing one true voice the grace and truth that came by Jesus Christ. Don't ever get to the point where all you want is grace in your life. The same God who speaks blessings in your life is also the same God who will come and speak the truth in your life to fix things that are wrong. And you have to have an ear to hear both sides. You can't have an ear to just say, well, I want the Lord to bless me. I want the Lord to speak this. No, 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 no. The voice of Christmas that came to you and I through Christ Jesus Christ, the voice of Christmas that came to us, that God so loved the world, that same voice, guess what? He also speaks, guess what, correction into our lives. You have to be willing to receive both if you want to hear God talk to you. If you want to hear God just tell you all the time that you're good, you're good, you're good, let me tell you something. You, you're in the wrong place. You have the wrong attitude. You've got to be able to hear God speak to you both things because if you don't, you're not going to hear God speak to you. Remember Saul? I'll give you an example because I'm not going to say something to you that's not in a word. Saul heard God say, go do this, go do that. This is good. Take care of this and take care of that. He heard that. But guess what? In the midst of hearing what God told him to do good, he, he refused to hear the correction of God. That's right. He refused to hear the correction of God when Samuel came and spoke to him and said, well, what is this? What is all of this? 
And you know, and Saul kept acting like that and being like that, that God said, no, something, you know, I got to find me somebody else that's want to do what I want to do. And he found Sam, he found Saul, David. And so we have to be able to listen to both sides of God's voice, not just the side that we want everything blessed on, but the side that says, guess what? There's some things in there that need to be fixed. There's some things in there that need to be come out. There's some things in there that need to be adjusted in life. There's some things in there that need to be put away. There's some things in there that we need to go to sway. See, the voice of Christmas, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, is for everybody. It's not just for a few select people. It's for everybody, see? And so when we celebrate this time, and this is a wonderful time to celebrate everything that you understand about Jesus Christ. It's a wonderful time. I see people at the stores, you know, and I don't go like, oh, man, they crowd out here. You know, the traffic is bad. I'm going like, praise God, people are moving because of the name of Jesus. I, I think about it because that voice came for all people, not just some, you know. And so that voice also came for the last soul. One day there's going to be the final soul, the final person that's going to be born again, all right? And when that final person accepts Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, the door is going to be shut. And this is why the voice of Christmas is speaking today. The invitation is open to you. Don't turn it down because you might be the last person to take a hold of that tassel on Jesus' clothing. You might be the last one. And when that last person says, yes, Lord, come into my life, a multitude of things are going to change because it's been spoken. God's voice has already said that there is a judgment coming and the last day things are going to happen that people really don't even expect it's going to happen. But it's going to be on the basis of that last person that accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And so I tell you today, before, don't take the chance of you being the last one. Don't sit around and believe that, well, I'm going to accept him one day before I go out. No, because you may not be the last one. See, You may not be the person at all who gets to accept him because there are many people all over the world that are hearing the voice of Christmas today. And tomorrow is not promised to you. So I implore you today, listen to the voice of Christmas. It's a, it's a wonderful voice that God sent us from his heart. You know, just like everything else that was created by his voice, you and I see, one day you and I are going to see the glory of God that was always created by his voice. We're going to see our king that God, you know, he's God's king. God chose Jesus to be king of kings. See, we're going to see everything that the Lord has already spoken and many new things throughout the millennials that we live with the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to see some things. But right now, we need to listen at the voice that's speaking the loudest to us. And today and tomorrow is the voice of Christmas. People are all over the world moving today because of Christmas. That voice is speaking. They are in the households, the neighborhoods, the stores, you know, all over. That voice of Christmas is speaking. Whosoever will, let him come. Whosoever will. I gave my son, you know, glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. I gave my son. That's the voice of Christmas. So whether you're a shepherd or whether you're a wise person, whether you are a Joseph or whether you're a loner, whether you're an outcast, or maybe you're just a stranger to the things of God, wherever you might be in this world, the voice of Christmas is speaking to you. And that voice is saying, whosoever will, let him come. God bless you this morning. Thank you for uh, your time uh, with me today and understanding some of the things about our voice. You know, this is probably about 50 lessons in uh, hearing God and understanding his voice. And, and I just wanted to bring this part out today because of God loving us so much that he would give his son that this time of year we celebrate and we do these wonderful things. So please give time today to think. The voice that's loudest in your life is the voice that's shaping you the most. If it's your job, if it's your family, if it's arguments in the house, confusion everywhere you go, that's a tremendous voice. Even pain can speak real loud. But you need to know that there's a voice that speaks to us. 
And that voice speaks through the intimacy more and more as we grow in the Lord, more and more as we want to hear him. He becomes real close to us. And you need to have his voice, whether it's the written word, whether it's a parent speaking to you, whether it's a man or woman of God somewhere speaking to you. You need to make sure that the voice of truth comes to you louder than any other voice. And if you do that, I'm telling you today, you're going to be just like Jesus said. He didn't have an ear to hear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying. You're going to be led by the Spirit of God, and you're going to move into dimensions of more and more truth, more and more excitement, but this is a year of excitement. You're going to move into more and more acceleration of intimacy with God. And that's all God's ever wanted. It's his wonderful place in your life that no one else can have. Open up the door and let Jesus come in. We bless you today in Jesus' name.